believe it or not, you're not the only person out there that dreams of opening a storefront boutique. And in this video, I really want to walk you through making sure that opening a storefront or a brick and mortar location for your business is the right thing to do at the right time. I think it's a great time right now, but stay tuned. I'll tell you why. If we haven't met yet, hi, it's great to meet you. My name is Emily Benson. I'm a business consultant and mindset coach for boutique owners. I also wrote this little book called The Ultimate Boutique Handbook, which is available on Amazon. It walks you through all the steps to get your boutique started. And that's part of what we're gonna talk about today. In this book, I do go through an entire chapter about how to select a location. I had a brick and mortar for a while and I picked the wrong location and I'm gonna tell you how to avoid that. Let's jump right in and talk about locations. First and foremost, you're gonna to wanna to be near where you live. If you're an hour, an hour and a half away, you're going to need to hire a local manager and for everyone who's just starting out, that might not be possible for you. So know that if you can be within like 30 minutes of where you live, that is ideal even closer is better. I lived down the street from my store, which was a little bit silly. It really helped. I could just walk there. I could stay later and walk home. No big deal. Um, because you know, the bottom line is you're going to be spending a lot of time at this store. And so the closer you are to home, the easier it is going to be to transition back and forth. And you just won't take time commuting. I find that a lot of people who have online stores want to open a brick and mortar and it's a great transition. It actually is a really nice way when you grow kind of out of your house. If you want to have a brick and mortar, it's perfect because you can have a back room where you can still ship, but then you also have that front location where people can come and pick up packages and then spend more money. <laughs> it also kind of legitimizes your business in a lot of ways. You know, anyone can be online. It definitely takes a little bit more work and more effort to have a storefront location. You have your sign out front, people can drive by and see what's going on. So that's a big piece of location is you want to have something that is either one of two things. One is a destination. People have to come to you. Maybe you're only open a few days a week, but they know they have to come to where you are. The better choice for a location is where you naturally have traffic. Now, whether that means actual traffic on the road or traffic in a plaza, both of these, those things are going to help you. If you can be near a restaurant, a nail salon, a hair salon, another boutique, yes, believe it, another boutique. If you can be near some of these other businesses that are open and have natural traffic, that's going to serve you. Do not think of this as competition. Think of it as where can I be a one-stop shop and exist where my ideal customer already is hanging out. She's maybe already going to get her nails done. Maybe that's her hair salon. Or maybe she drives by often because I'm on the main strip of where I live or a town or city that is near your home. When you are thinking about what that town or city looks like, now I'm going to speak mostly about the US, but I think this can kind of go for everywhere too. So if you're watching from another country, drop a comment below and tell me where you're watching from. So when you're picking the location, you really want to do some demographic research, which you can easily do at a regional or a state library. So I live in Massachusetts. I would most likely go to the Boston Public Library and work with one of the librarians to look up census data for my area where I want to open, the town or the city that I wanted to open, and then areas around it. What kind of disposable income do people have there? Uh, how much are they spending on houses? Are they maxing out mortgages and they, they don't have extra money? Or maybe it's a town where people have a lot of kids and they just don't spend money on themselves. Women don't spend that kind of money. Now listen, that doesn't mean it has to stop you from having your store, but it will inform your direction in terms of how much rent you wanna pay, how much revenue you can expect to make, and really just thinking about your pricing and assortment structure. What are the women or men or whomever you're serving in that town, what are they going to want? You know, and maybe that, leads you in a different direction where you know, oh my gosh, I don't want to be in that city or town. But most likely, if you started online and you have a good local customer base, opening locally will help you. Now, 
I'm not gonna say this happens to everyone, but generally what I see is a nice little five to $10,000 boost in a business that was just online before, now that they have a brick and mortar location. And again, this is not guaranteed for everyone. This is just kind of trends that I've seen for the past five, six years, consulting hundreds of boutique owners uh, who have slowly and quickly expanded. Um, so I do think that if you're in a situation where you're online only, you've kind of outgrown your space and you're ready to have a brick and mortar, then it's a really great option for you. Don't forget, you can also move out into a warehouse or storage space or an office and still operate online, but start to separate that home and work life and maybe give yourself some more space for inventory as you grow, because the more money you make, the more inventory you need, the more space you need, the more employees you need, you just are gonna need more space. It's like growing your family. You know, you're gonna grow out of your studio apartment and eventually end up in a four bedroom house. It's just naturally something that needs to happen as you grow. Are you watching this video because you're thinking about opening a storefront or brick and mortar location? Let me know down in the comments below. I wanna hear about what you're worried about so I can make some more content and videos just for you. Okay, I know this video is gonna be a little longer than my normal, but there's so much I wanna teach you about this topic, so we're gonna keep going. Now, the next thing that I realize so many people worry about is what's it gonna cost me to run a storefront? How much more am I gonna to have to pay? I get it kind of free at my house, but what happens when I decide to commit to a space? That's gonna depend on location, obviously what you're paying. It's also gonna depend on what kind of property it is. Are you working with a national property management company or property owners where they have plazas all over the country and, and they have different special requirements? That might be the case for you. And you're gonna have to work with a commercial real estate broker to help you get into one of those spaces. They tend to be a bit more complicated with legalities and longer term leases. They can or cannot be more expensive than you know a mom and pop rental unit. But I think it's worth considering because when you can move into a space that is next to a national chain restaurant or a national chain salon, those are places where those companies have done their research and they know that that's a high traffic, good location for what they're doing. And so therefore it can be used as a clue that maybe it would be good for you too. It's gonna depend on your location in the world, but I would say here in the United States, if you're in a a suburban or urban area, somewhere that is in a, a strip mall or a mall is going to be anywhere between $3,000 and upwards $20,000 a month. I think you can land somewhere between five and eight and $10,000 a month. Yes, that's crazy, that's expensive. But again, you're getting a lot of benefits with that. You're getting potentially better exposure. It could be a good option for you. It's worth it for you to look at and consider. The other option would be to move into somewhere that's kind of locally owned and managed. Maybe it's uh, someone in town who just owns a lot of properties. You know, if you see a spot that you love, call about it. Like if there's a neighbor who's a florist, go in there and say, hey, who's your landlord? I see there's an open space. Do you know what's going on over there? It's okay to kind of do your research and ask around. That's where you're gonna start to form relationships. That's where you'll learn, maybe that florist says, oh my God, don't move in here. <laughs> like this place is crumbling or like that bathroom doesn't work. Like maybe you hear some good things because you've reached out and you've done that exploratory work. Just because you go in and ask questions, just because you call a number on a sign does not commit you to actually renting that location. This is the type of work that you're gonna wanna do a lot of due diligence on and understand what the pros and cons are to moving into some of these locations. And maybe for you, it's easy. It's an easy, you live in a small town, there's one plaza that you can move into, there's one building. When you're moving into these spaces, how much are you willing to afford to spend? I would say that anywhere between 10 to 20% of your monthly revenue is about the right amount to go into a brick and mortar location. I don't want to guarantee anything. I'm not, <laughs> not going to sit here and say, you move into brick and mortar, you're going to explode. I didn't. And that's why I'm telling you, like I can, I can teach you both sides of the coins because I've also had clients move into brick and mortar locations and double and triple their sales because they're open more. They, you know, you can stop in. Does it cost them more? Yes. Yeah. So let's talk about that. What are the costs involved with openings? Obviously it's going to be like renting an apartment. You're going to need some sort of first month, last month security deposit situation 
to put down on that space, you're probably going to need to sign some contracts um, that you want to understand what are the pieces and parts you pay for. Do you pay for utilities, cable, snow shoveling, grass trimming? You know, what are the things involved in this property that get taken care of by the management company? And what is your responsibility? Because some of those things are going to be added costs. If you have to pay for electricity and water and heat, then absolutely yes, you're gonna to wanna to put that in your budget. Also, you're naturally gonna have some more operating costs to deal with. So hopefully you're gonna hire an employee or two because I don't know if you can do this yourself. I kinda of don't want you to do it yourself. You're also probably gonna have a few more costs with fixtures and setup. You know, that initial cost, that startup cost is going to be a little bit higher because you've gotta outfit the place, right? And some leases will include that, a budget for that. The leasing company will pay for it. Sometimes it's up to you. I mean, listen, I was the girl who was painting my floors, painting my walls, patching the walls, making my store look perfect before I moved in. I got no help from my landlord, which was fine, but there are some opportunities out there, and especially in a newer plaza where the rental company does have allocated money to give you for a build out, a proper build out with a construction team. And you could go as DIY as I did because I was in a small town in an old, old building, or you could go really high end and spend some money, invest some money and build out this beautiful store. Now, I think there has to be a middle ground and you have to do what's right for you and really the revenue number that you're at. Generally, I see people who are anywhere between $15,000 a month and $30,000 a month just online really want to take that leap into a brick and mortar and i encourage it i think you're you've proven you're successful uh, you've had consistent months that you've made five figures or more and i think it's probably about time I, I you know i wouldn't say open in your first three months i would say give yourself six 12 18 months i've had people wait three or four years to open brick and mortars there's no rush to the finish line. Uh, I want you to be able to afford it. I don't want you to stress about money once you move in because the last piece of all of this is inventory. I get asked all the time, how much inventory do I need to open a brick and mortar? And I'm gonna tell you, it totally depends on how big your store is. I have people that have come to me and they have rented 3,000 square feet. And I'll freak out. I'll be like, that's a lot of space to fill. You don't need to use all that space for storefront. You could say, I'm gonna have a thousand square foot storefront space, and then I'm gonna save 2,000 square feet in the back. I'm gonna have shipping, receiving, I'm gonna have a mini warehouse, I'm gonna have a Facebook Live set up, I'm gonna have an office, I'm gonna have a break room. This is gonna be my company headquarters. So that's an option for you. You don't always have to say, oh my gosh, I have to fill the whole space. I always say, build a wall that you can move later. <laughs> And I'm sure every contractor is like, that's not a thing. But you get where I'm going with this, is that you know you wanna have enough space so that you can feel like people can move around and you know you could have parties and things like that. However, remember every inch that you leave open in that storefront, you have to fill with inventory. So that stacks up your bills of inventory. And honestly, I think when you have a smaller space, you have less inventory and you can turn it more quickly therefore bringing in new items more often, which your customers will absolutely love. You'll get people coming back every week, every two weeks, because they know you always have new stuff. So it's a whole big picture of things you have to think about when you open a storefront. I really hope some of this has helped you. If you want to learn more from me for free, I have this awesome new micro course that basically walks you through branding, ideal customer, getting that product assortment right, it is, I think about two hours worth of content. It's insane that I give this away for free, but I want to help you. That's why I have this YouTube channel. So if you wanna get in on that, you can go to growmy.boutique. That will take you right to the page where you can enter your email and we will send you over the micro course. You'll get the videos. I hope you love it. It is something I put a lot of time and energy into because I think that now is the time for boutique. So if you like this content, if you like what I'm teaching, don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe, stay here. We have so many new videos coming for you. I'm so excited. I will talk to you soon.